Hi, my name is Eric Greenspan, and welcome to the Founder John Melrose, where we cook modern American food with whimsy and flair. For me, the grilled cheese sandwich is the perfect platform to explain my philosophies on food. Lots and lots of butter. I've seen some things, I've worked in some places, and I make a mean grilled cheese sandwich. When you eat, you start with your eyes. And when you see a gooey grilled cheese, you know it's gonna be delicious. When you hear that crunch, you know it's gonna be a good grilled cheese sandwich. When you smell that cheese, you know it's gonna be a good grilled cheese sandwich. So that by the time you taste it, you already know. Mm, it's gonna be a great grilled cheese sandwich. <laughs> I'm gonna show you how to make perhaps the finest grilled cheese sandwich known to man. The champ started off our grilled cheese phenomenon. The secret to good grilled cheese, Mediocre bread. You use a fancy bread, they've got too much yeast in them. They create pockets of air, which makes for uneven browning of the bread. Remember, mediocre bread, superior grilled cheese. One of the biggest decisions one needs to make when making a grilled cheese sandwich is, what cheese do I use? Secret to my grilled cheese, Telegio. She's very soft. In fact, it's halfway melted before I even cook it. That way it's gooey, luxurious, and rich. And when you're making a perfect sandwich, you gotta have a lot of different intense flavors going on. A keto grilled cheese sandwich is even spreading of the cheese and you can't get slices of Telegio, so what do you do? I take a big giant scoop of cheese. And I mold it and I pound it. Now we have a homemade slice of cheese. I just put that on the bread and I sneeze it. But what is going on around here? This is bedlam. The sky is falling. <laughs> now we're gonna get wacky. I wanted to do a cheese plate, but I didn't want to have a cheese plate kind of feel. So I took the elements of a cheese plate and put it into a sandwich. I use an apricot caper puree. What that does is it brings a salinity and a sweetness and a brightness to the sandwich. You gotta slowly adjust the speed of the blender to make sure that it stays caught so that you don't have to add liquid. That's how you make a perfect apricot caper puree. Perfect. Finally, the key to a great grilled cheese sandwich, butter. You'll notice, once the butter hits the hot pan, it starts to toast. It smells nutty and delicious. That's called brown butter. I'm taking the bread and I'm putting her in. Now, when you're cooking anything in a pan, a good trick is to keep turning whatever you're cooking every now and again. Even cooking makes for perfect cooking. So don't be afraid to add a little bit more butter before you turn it. You hear that crackle? That's the sound of a grilled cheese cooking because there's still moisture in the butter and you're not burning your sandwich. I got a beautiful flip and you'll see. Even color, golden brown, all the way across. Some would think that's a great grilled cheese. Perhaps a perfect grilled cheese, but not here at the Foundry on Melrose, alas. We need to push it over the edge. I give you beef short ribs. So I take braised beef short ribs. I shred them up. Remember, this is a grilled cheese sandwich with short ribs, not a beef sandwich. The key to a beautiful piece of glazed meat is reducing it in sauce. So I'm gonna take the liquid that the short ribs were cooked in, I'm gonna pour it over the top of the meat. When I reduce the sauce, it takes out the moisture, leaving behind just the sticky, icky marmalade of beef. I take this sticky beef. I take this beautiful grilled cheese. We'll put some beef in. And after all that, what you get is not just a grilled cheese. You get the champ, worthy of trophies like these. And, and faces like these. My name is Eric Greenspan, and you are watching Star Chef Secrets on Tasted. Don't forget to click the subscribe. What? Slimy sea urchins can get you high and it's an aphrodisiac? What more could you ask for? Find out if it really works on Why Would You Eat That? Or if totally awesome, mind-boggling, slow-motion, extreme explosions are more your speed, find out what we're blowing up this week on Taste Explosions. On Star Chef Secrets, you can learn how to take Latin cuisine to a whole new level with spectacular creative dishes by all-star chef John Sedlar. And Oktoberfest may be over, but that doesn't mean we can't still guzzle beer along with delicious homemade pretzels, courtesy of the Dude Food Dudes. What about an incredible chocolate pudding and bacon custard concoction? Join Chef Kevin Gillespie in his never-ending pursuit for the best in bacon. 
in the Why Would You Eat That Boys trick Georgia into eating what she thinks is a delicious burrito? What are they serving up this time on Why Would You Eat That? Add some spice to life with the Food Network's Hot Tamales. They'll teach you all you need to know about prepping for a fabulous Mexican fiesta. Get the recipe for an over-the-top BLT sandwich with an awesome dude food twist. Swordfish. Learn how to upgrade your BLT to a killer surf and turf masterpiece. And who wants to taste a nauseatingly bad-smelling food? The office does. Watch your favorite employees attempt stinky tofu on Why Would You Eat That?